So what's up everyone? Uh, today we're going to be doing something a little different, but first I want to show you this shirt. You're going to you're gonna notice that I'm pretty bright right now. Uh, I, I had a little deal with a guy named Brian Collada. If you don't know Brian, he's over there with Train By Techs. Post the link to their channel right above. Now Brian is a Cleveland Browns fan and I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And if you don't know, the Browns just beat the Steelers. So I'm wearing this shirt. So it has my logo on the front and, and the Cleveland Browns logo on the back. So what we're going to be doing today is fixing this uh, ECM out of a 2014 Tundra. Now, what happened to this ECM is a rodent chewed both the power wire and the control wire for the Cylinder 7 fuel injector. Two wires shorted together. Uh, so when the injector driver for number 7 turned on, uh, had boatloads of current running through it and blew up the driver. Now, I'm not a pro at this. Uh, something I'm just learning how to repair these circuit boards. If you want to learn more, maybe check out uh, Keith Perkins at L1 Automotive Diagnostics. Um, and there's other videos on YouTube as well. But I figured it'd be cool to show you all how I went about diagnosing this circuit board. So. What you're going to see here is there's going to be four drivers for the injectors on this side and four, one, two, three, four. So that's for your eight cylinders. Uh, each injector has its own driver on this circuit board and I already figured out which, which driver is for cylinder seven, uh, but I'll show you how I figured it out. So I grabbed the wiring diagram and I back probed uh, the ground wire for the ECM and I also back probe the uh, control wire for cylinder 7 fuel injector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use diode mode on my uh, multimeter and I'm using diode mode because a lot of these uh, legs on here are pretty tiny. It's hard to control and hold um, my test leads onto these legs. So I'm using diode mode because if I'm using continuity, uh, continuity has to auto scale it takes a little while, but diode mode is instantaneous. Now, when you're doing something like a diode mode, uh, you're using voltage drop. So zero volts of voltage drop, obviously no resistance. Uh, high amounts of voltage drop. Uh, there's, you know, infinite or, or a lot of resistance. So just keep that in mind when you see these measurements. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to be essentially looking at the voltage drop between my control wire in these drivers to see which driver is actually uh, for number seven. So you can see I already have this one marked. Like I said, I diagnosed this earlier, um, but I'm going to have my red lead going into my control wire for injector number seven. And I'm going to touch uh, these Pins. Now, if I have continuity, which I, I will, like I said, I already did this. So when I, I check continuity or voltage drop, um, this will signify that this is the transistor going directly uh, to this pin that leads to injector number seven. So if you can hear that, I have 0 0.01 volts of voltage drop, no resistance uh, from the pin going into the circuit board to this transistor. Now all four of these will be the same. Now, if this is the drain, these four wires are the drain. I keep touching these, making it beep. So if these four wires are the drain, then these up here should be for the source and the gate. So you see I have one volt of voltage drop, one volt of voltage drop, one, and zero. So these three are going to be my source, this is going to be my gate. So four pins for my drain, three pins for my source, one pin for my gate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap this lead over to my ground wire 
and I'm going to check the source uh, terminal. All right. So this is going to be my source one, two, three. And my last one. I have one volt on my gate again. Now I swap this lead over to cylinder eight just to show you what a uh, known good will look like. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna go. Ah, uh, gonna go to this pin. So this here again is gonna be my drain, and I had 0.02 volts on it, no resistance. Uh, but I'm going to now show you my drain and show you that I have no continuity. If you remember before, even when I was checking this, I had a voltage drop uh, between my source and drain. Now there is a diode inside of these and you should have continuity one way, uh, but not the way we are testing it. That tells me that the diode internally is shorted out for driver number seven. So again, this here's 0 0.02. This is zero. And our, our gate also has nothing on it. Remember, for number seven, I had one volt of voltage drop. So that's not good. Now, I did, I just swapped my leads. I now have the black wire going into the pin. Just to show you, I'm reversing the polarity on here. Just to show you the diode for number eight is good, right? So I still have continuity. But I should now have uh, continuity through here through the diode. And I have 0.5 volts of voltage drop. So this tells me that my diode on here is good, but the diode in here is shorted. Back to number seven. Good. and I have one volt of voltage draw. So now we know, now we know that this uh, driver is definitely bad. I, I hope this all makes sense. I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to make through it. I'm going to hook up a light bulb to this circuit and show you all if this, how this works. So, this, lo this looks like a lot going on here, but, so this, <laughs> so this looks like a lot going on, but basically what I have is I have a power supply, I have it set to, have it set to 3 amps at 12 volts, alright, so I have one wire coming from my power supply going into my bulb, the bulb has a wire leaving going into my ECM, the ECM is also grounded back to my power supply. Now, when I touch the transistor gate terminal with this test light, this light bulb should turn on. So we'll find number seven again. Number seven, where, where is it? All right, now remember the terminal with the dot is our gate. So when I turn this on, I have nothing and I also have no amperage output on my power supply this thing should have went up when I touched this circuit alright so I moved my front probe to pin 106 that's for cylinder 8 as I touch this test light to my gate you should be able to see this light turn on let's get this in focus See it turn on every time I touch this terminal, this gate, my light turns on. So you can now see for sure that term, uh, driver, so you can see for sure driver number eight is good. Uh, driver number seven is gonna need replaced. Uh, actually, and you can also see that when I turn this gate on, my power supply goes up to one, or 2.1 amps of current flowing through. Uh, so I'm going to swap out, I'm going to swap out this driver, see if we can get this thing to work. 
So we need to keep in mind that terminal number one is going to be in our top right corner. We need to put it back in the same spot. Uh, we got a new new driver. You can't see it. I, I don't know why I'm holding it up. But I got a new driver. We're going to install this one and see if we can get this thing to work. Uh, got some flux. Uh, flux is your friend anytime you're doing this. We're going to put flux on our transistor legs. Have a hot air gun warming up. Just going to heat up this chip until the solder starts to melt. As soon as the solder, solder starts to melt, just pull it up with our tweezers. Just like that. Alright, I'm gonna put this one off to the side so we don't get it mixed up. I'm gonna put some more, I'm gonna put some more flux on these pads. I'm gonna clean these pads up, get some new new solder down on them. Some new flux. Iron should be hot enough now. I'm just gonna tin the tip. Alright. I'm going to use some uh, copper wick to clean these pads up. Let's see if I can get this back in view. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. Washer. All right, so those pads are nice and clean. Just gonna go back over them, put some new solder on these pads. Nice new solder on these pads, and I will try to get this driver back on. Throw some more flux down. Never have too much flux. Alright, so I have this driver line back up. Just going to heat this up. As I heat this up, this thing should kind of fall back into place. Uh, the solder should kind of like suck it uh, back into the correct position, if that makes sense. Looks good to me. I just need to, I'm just going to use a soldering iron, go back over these legs real quick just to make sure they uh, they are soldered down nice and, nice and well.
Alright, um, this looks pretty good. I'm going to just clean this up with some alcohol and uh, we'll test it out. Alright, so I have this all hooked back up. I have my test light going into the circuit board. When I touch this gate terminal, remember it's the one with the circle, uh, this test light should light up. It does. And it's blinding me. So, we were able to fix this. Now, for full transparency, this is not going back in a car right now. Um, I wanted to see if I could do it. I'm taking you along on my journey of learning this stuff. I've been talking to a lot of people who do this, and they've been kind of showing me the ropes. So, just wanted to bring you all along for my journey. This one's not going in a car or in a Tundra, but I am going to hold on to this in case one day I do need to do this to a vehicle, you know? Uh, if I can replace a, a one cent driver, not a one cent, a one dollar driver, compared to a thousand dollar ECM, I, it, it might be an option to give somebody, especially if, if I'm confident in my ability. So I'm going to continue practicing, trying to get better. Uh, don't be too harsh in the comments about my soldering skills or my terminology used. I'm new to this. Uh, but I hope you all enjoyed this, and uh, catch you all next time.